Hello from our studios here in Cape Town. Welcome to our local news bulletin. With me, Leonora Jawara. First, the headlines. The National Young Congress of the Old Coast Congress is just the decision of the chairman and former president, Dr. Ernest Baikuma, to retire from active politics. If you say this is not the time for let inform the rest of APC. Why did they thank me? Why did they thank the people of Sierra Leone? Next to Sierra Leone, World Terminal embarked on construction of the breadth of the Queen Elizabeth King. Purpose here is the, uh, in, in terms of the government's privatization program. Statistics Sierra Leone, together with the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, engage stakeholders on eradicating multidimensional Child poverty and children by 2030. Able to reduce poverty, uh, or other words, increase well or well being in the population. Nobody's making headlines. Let's now get you details of the news. The National Young Congress of the Old People's Congress Party, in an emergency press conference conveyed at the party's headquarters, Leroy Line Brookfields in Freetown, has endorsed the decision of the chairman and former president, Dr. Anas Bai Kuruma, to retire from active politics, noting that his departure is going to usher in an era in which young people are going to take leadership in the party. Asia to Modifona has more and she now reports. Press release dated 13th April 2022 from the office of the former president of Sierra Leone and outgoing chairman and leader of the All People's Congress, Dr. Anes Baikuma, underpinned the decision of the statesman to relinquish his current position and reiterated that he has no interest in party or national office. President of the National Youth Congress, Bai Mahmoud Bangura, said the leadership of the National Youth Congress, however, subsumed the decision of the outgoing chairman and leader to exit the political stage and not to contest for any position in the next delegate conference. Security, democracy, and democratization, a police say this is not the time for let inform the rest of APC. Why did they thank me? Why did they thank the people of Sierra Leone for saying the next convention, the next convention where they come, in no go contest again for any position. When the message come on, some people because of that clause they not believe because Boko people they don't want they go, Boko people they still want them. But let continue with the leadership. But good people are still want time because we know say that a major political capital, not only for APC, but for Sierra Leone. Because of him, waiting the good things that we don't cast alone. There's so many. So nobody no go want to lose a leader like that. But the most important thing, we serve him as a leader. We're not selfish. He's selfless. He love this country. He love the things that we don't do, the legacies that we don't left. Now he make a believe say he can sacrifice himself to take a back seat for let a piece kind of power that he continue for the with me and continue for say no a piece will continue for going to opposition. The content national secretary general read out the content of the press release stating that they were not surprised as his departure was imminent. 2022, the initial reaction of the National Young Congress on the chairman and leader's position to exit the political stage and his decision not to contest for any position in the party's next national delegate conference. I The leadership of the National Young Congress, formerly National Youth League, 
has received and carefully studied the press release dated 13th April 2022 coming from the office of the former president, chairman and leader of the APC, Dr. Ernest Bai Koroma. The leadership of the National Young Congress, along with its membership, has noted and fully assimilated the position of the chairman and leader and his decision to exit the political stage and his strong reassurances not to contest for any position in the next national delegate conference. We further note the former president's commitment to peace, security, and promotion of democracy and good governance, which form essential features of his distinguished leadership throughout his tenure as chairman and leader of the APC and as president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. We therefore hereby state that this decision has not come as a surprise, as it has always indicated that his departure is imminent. As the wing that hosts the present and future determination and sustainable growth of the party, we wish to endorse, support, and congratulate the former president for that great decision. The former president of Sierra Leone and outgoing chairman and leader of the All People's Congress, Anes Baikoma, notes in his press release that the APC is capable of a smooth and successful transition, which the party has demonstrated over the past four years. For Star TV News, compiled by Moses Oju Kamara, read in the studio by Asia Tumolofona. In a bid to increase the ease of shipments, competitiveness, the ability and profitability of the facilities, and attract greater international traffic, the next Sierra Leone Bulk Terminal has embarked on the construction of the third berth of the Queen Elizabeth Quay. George Elliot Sam has the details. One of the key players operating at the Queen Elizabeth Quay, the second in Sierra Leone, which is the next Sierra Leone Bulk Terminal, commonly known as the NSBT, has embarked on the expansion of the sea surface. The entity, which is a joint venture company that won a tender issue by government of Sierra Leone way back in 2014 to run the bulk terminal at the port of the quay. Since it started operations, the company has been functioning in a way that are geared towards a meeting international best practice and high standards in all aspects of its operations and has invested hugely in equipment and infrastructure in order to provide the necessary service needed for all areas of the port, said the general manager, Jen Page. Our purpose here is the, uh, in, in terms of the government's privatization program, um, they've allowed various companies to uh, tender their, uh, their abilities to operate various what were formerly government-owned entities and operate them. So we've seen, for example, uh, Bellore who privatized the container terminal. We have privatized the, the bulk terminal and we handle commodities such as rice, cement, wheat, flour, sugar, salt. There's a number of commodities which are imported in bulk quantities, or break bulk quantities as we refer to, um, which are essential for life as we know it on a day-to-day -day basis. Jim Page, for that, that Nectar could now boast of having its possessions, new handling equipment, improved warehouse and effective security apparatus, powerful security line, all in place to offer a better user experience. Well, I think the thing to remember is that this port was constructed um, in the early 1950s and technology in terms of ships has changed in those uh, intervening years. So we've now reached a point where the ships that are current generation are no longer able to berth at, for example, berth one here 
which is prone to silting and sedimentation from the river. So our thought process was in order to facilitate the, the capacity of the port, we would have to construct a new berth which would have deep water, deep draft, uh, to allow us to, to accommodate larger vessels. Now, the rationale behind larger vessels is that typically the bigger the ship, the lower the freight cost per item. So, for example, a small ship which carries, say, 6,000 tons, the price per commodity might be $10. Whereas when you go to a ship that's capable of carrying 50,000 tons, the price per item might come down to $6. So the ultimate aim is to reduce the cost of importing product, to reduce the price to the man in the street. With regards to its activity, Jim Page noted that Nectar is responsible for all the activities at the port from the offloading of vessels to storing of cargoes in port warehouse, including maintenance of all terminal equipment. He also noted that the company introduced a new method of handling cargo and invest in new equipment and infrastructure at the port. With the improvement ushered in by the company since 2015, short results into ship discharging more efficiently and faster. It also successfully beef up security at the port to short and extend that stealing has been drastically minimized. So the port expansion program has been through a number of iterations. Um, the final design that we've come to has been a little bit of a compromise. We've determined the size of the vessels that we are going to be able to handle in the future and we've looked at the facilities that we have existing in the port and we've looked at what we can expand, how we can expand the capacity of those facilities and therefore improve the throughput of the port itself. The, the current plan, which is the one that is being initiated now, allows us to berth a vessel referred to in the shipping industry as a Panamax. Now that would be a ship that is 225 meters in length and approximately 42 meters in breadth, which by local standards is, is fa fairly significant. Initially, um, NSBT was given, um, we, weren't, we weren't a concession, we were a terminal operator, and we managed to, in discussion with government, in embarking on our expansion plans, we converted that to a concession. So the, the, the granting of the concession and the extension of the time period made for us economic sense to embark on the construction project. Um, sadly, of course, we've had the, uh, the issue of COVID-19 in the last two years, which has certainly hindered commencement of the operation, apart from the other socio-economic impact it's had on the community at large. However, we're in a position now where construction is imminent. As you may have seen on the key side, we've got our contractor mobilizing, we've got uh, machinery and equipment landing, and uh, construction will, I believe, commence before the end of this month. He also stated that there are now two beds at the key and expensive warehouse facilities with the Queen Elizabeth II port now providing bulk and prick discharge. We are our services, key side banging facilities, an integrated digital terminal management system, and a consolidated cargo management. The objective of the Nectar Seagull and Bulk Terminal is to increase and ease shipment, competitiveness, viability, and profitability of port facilities, and to attract greater international traffic. For Star TV News, George Elliott Sam reporting. As the government of Sierra Leone strives towards achieving sustainable development goal, a target set in reducing multidimensional poverty among children by 2030, Statistics Sierra Leone and the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development has commenced their inception workshop with different stakeholders on eradicating multidimensional child poverty. Alfie Bari has the details.
ending poverty is an explicit target of the Sustainable Development Goals 1. Children experience poverty differently from adults as they are more vulnerable and have specific needs. This inception workshop, organized by Statistics Sierra Leone and the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, attracted different stakeholders. This, according to Director of Demographic, Health and Social Statistics, Sonia Magba Bubakar Jabi, is aimed at measuring child poverty using multiple overlapping deprivation analysis, utilizing seven measurable dimensions. So if we're able to reduce poverty, uh, or other words, increase wealth or well-being in the population, I mean, looking at the seven dimensions, if we're able to in increase the usage of improved water sources, improved sanitation, improved shelter, improved health care, and for all the rest of the seven dimensions, then we have made an improvement to the well-being of our children as a whole. Once we have improved on their well-being, we have made improvements in society. In other words, the nation will make progress towards achieving the SDGs and other um, development agenda like the medium-term um, national development plan. The director further stated that a child is deemed to be multidimensionally poor when he or she is deprived of at least one of the above mentioned dimensions. He however sought to put a positive spin on the efforts adopted so far in reducing child poverty by stating that in 2016, 77% of children were surveyed to be multidimensionally poor, but that was however reduced to 66% in 2019. What are the steps that policymakers need to adapt to reduce child poverty? If a child is not deprived in any of these dimensions, we do not consider the child to be poor. So a child is considered to be poor if that child is deprived in at least one of the seven dimensions that we use for multidimensional child poverty. So this is an approach that uh, we have been using. It, it, it's different from monetary poverty in the past. We have been uh, defining poverty using a cut-off point of one, uh, I think 1.9 dollars a day. In 2016, we estimated child poverty, multidimensional child poverty, using the multiple indicator cluster survey of 2010, and we got an incidence of child poverty of 77%. That is 77% of serial union children who are multidimensionally, continue to be multidimensionally poor. In 2019, using 2017 mixed data, this number reduced by 11 percentage points to around 66%. That is, in 2019, 66% of our children in Sierra Leone were considered to be multidimensionally poor. So this time round, we do not have a new mixed data set to use, so we're using the 2019 demographic um, and health survey to use that data set to estimate multidimensional child poverty to see if we are making progress. The director concluded by stating that they are stats alone will always provide the government with the data and the guardians, stating that by June this year they will be able to come up with new data on child poverty. It's a continuous process. We continue to monitor. As a country, we are trying to ensure that we can achieve as many of the SDGs as we can by 2030. We did not do so well as a nation in relation to the MDGs. But now that uh, policies are being put in place, we are hopeful that we will be able to make progress towards achieving SDGs, especially SDG 1. That is a reduction of poverty in all forms. So hopefully the work we're doing here, or starting today, for this is the third round of child poverty estimates that we are seeking to develop. Once we have concluded this process, say by June, latest by June, we should have a report, we will invite you again to come to that launching so that we can we will all see whether progress has been made or not. But hopefully progress will be made and uh Sierra Leone will be better for it. Thank you. For Star TV News in Freetown, Alfie Barry on the news.
just joining us, you're watching the local news bulletin here on Star TV. Now, the Sierra Leone Water Company, Seluaco, has signed a contract and launched the Six Towns Water Supply Project in Moyamba Town, worth 558 billion euros. Now, over 400,000 people are set to benefit from this Six Town Water Supply Project implemented by Seluaco. Here is Admire Samai with more. Welcoming participants at the launching. The Paramount Chief, P.C. Momo Glamour, expresses happiness for the project. He said since the coming of President Julius Madabio, the district continued to witness development, which the district has been without pipe burning water for the last 40 years. So this is a dream come true. Mr. Minister, uh, we in Amende, we did talk and say, have been not open for Moyamba district and the country as a whole. Uh, I want to uh, say, and especially the minister, then, for let uh, tell President Bio for say. We gladly for them because they bring so many development there for Winna Moamba district. The chairman begin for name, but we go end up. We just don't uh, launch the NASIT project with a one of its kind of the country. We we'll also get the Moyamba District Electrification Project, where they go on right now. And we also get from where this government comes. We'll let we know from where President Bio and government come. That's also development in kind of Moyamba District. Giving an overview of the project, the managing director of Salwako, Engineer Vande, noted that the project will target 100% customers and before the completion, connection of pipe networks would have been done. He also called on the council, local authorities, including the people, to protect the facility. The six towers of supply projects, the cover six towns, we don't say but we just go over briefly. Um, we get Kabala, like Konadugu district, we get Kailamu, we get uh, the Kambia, we get Madoka, we get Mayaba, and we get Uja. But as we all know, um, the governance administration is governed by laws, of called the procurement law. So before we will spend government money, we have to go through the procurement process. And we all know the procurement are itself by the honoring of the process. So we start all the procurement um, activity at the same time for all these 10 months, sometime early last year. But unfortunately, or incidentally, let me put it that way, that only three of the laws will be successful at the first stage. The Chairman Parliamentary Oversight Committee on Water, Honorable Lahai Mara, said one key responsibility of Parliament is oversight, which as committee, they will continue to hold government to account and that they will continue to provide oversight. He also noted that they are satisfied with the Six Tanks Water Supply Project, but what is disturbing the project is the delays in funding and call on the Ministry of Finance to fast track payments so as to complete the project. And we can use project documents. For what we actually will see, there's waiting in the document, now I don't believe at all. Just like the colleague on the book, the say, and make a, I tell him, say, we can wait to be called for option. We go for order into the Water Resources Committee for make sure say, we gain the required power as a parliamentarian for providing necessary oversight in this particular moment. As a committee, Mr. Chairman, I also the represent the leader of government business, with the on the way from chairman to origin. As a leader, I get a lot of responsibility we still attend to. As a committee, so far, we don't do the work. 
Recently, we called Salwako for me they can give me updates, for me they can give me some explanation about certain projects. Giving the keynote address and the launching of the project, the Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Patrick Lansana, said there has been several calls for Moyamba district to have safe, clean and affordable pipe borne water, which an investigation was launched into water access in Moyamba and the five other districts and developments a proposal that was presented to the Ministry of Finance. He also noted that the water will not be free and that with this Salawako will be able to stay and do maintenance without risks to government. And then time then. But it is so small, so meager, so ineffective, so irregular, so unreliable, that one day we can make a buyer. All about the Kumana, uh, the podium for talk, the talk is not going to tell me. Say the president called me and asked me, you know that Mrs. Moore said in Mayama? First, I called the chairman and said, there will be a cash in my head. Then I get to go and clarify things with the president. The president can really believe, say yes, indeed. Small water day, but because of the status of the water, all my face was not there at all. In fact, I did not get to explain, say, because of the situation, we don't agree, say, we they transfer this facility to Sarawako. And, you know, at this point, I really say thanks to the stakeholders of this district. Especially the ministers, they will get the, the, the district at heart. Self supporting, they will pay for water. Because as we speak, they, they ask for money from government, and all the small they come in. The government, the last time they ask, that's 30 billion, they, they only receive 5 billion. But we know that they get money from the sale of water, they don't money for part of government. Admire Samai reporting for Star TV News. A non profit making organization dubbed UNESA Mental Health Resource as donated food items worth millions of years to the Kisi Psychiatric Teaching Hospital at Kisi. Alkibami has more. I'm really happy today for Sudea and see Una this way. And I pray that one day me and I will meet outside, we will chill like so, we will relax like so, we will get good time like so. Because I know say Una are better people there. I believe in Una, trust me. On a day like today, we are not there because of anything. No. Because we serve there with Una. We are not there with Una. Every day we are in our door, we always remember our insider. Doris B. Bright, the CEO and founder of Unisa Mental Health Resource, when giving a brief background of the organization and their purpose of visits to the psychiatric hospital at Kisi, stated that they went there to lift their spirit so they will not feel abandoned. Like I said, uh, out there in the hall, the UNISA Mental Health was found then, uh, from the, the brick for my pain. Um, I could have done the opposite, but it was not going to benefit me. So I decided to use my pain to restore the broken lives, which just means that um, if people that are suffering, if you have someone suffering from mental health, your life is broken. And so what I do, that was the reason for the, uh, the coming up with the UNISA Mental Health. So use my pain to help other families, other patients, uh -uh, other people that are basically suffering from the illness. So first of all, I grew up knowing Kisi Mental Hospital. I believe that is the only structured hospital for mentally ill people that I know uh, growing up as a, as a child. So when I got impacted directly by mental health through my, uh, my children, I turned to them. The CLO's ambassador to China, Anes Mbemba Ndomaina, says their presence through the donation demonstrates the renewed interest they are having in the health sector, adding that they will continue to support the health sector, especially those dealing with mental health issues. Our presence here tells you that we are very serious about the healthcare system. We've got a lot to do, but we left everything just to be here today, supporting our dear sister through the UNISA Health, uh, UNISA Mental Health Resource. So I believe by our presence here, we will continue to support our brothers and sisters who are mentally ill, and like any other sicknesses, we believe by just showing that kind of love, that kind of care and concern, our brothers and sisters 
with the OK. And our government is very serious about it. Today, His Excellency Dr. Julius Madapio launched what we call the Quality Essential Health Service Group. $60 million is not small money. $60 million US dollar will go a long way in our, in our healthcare system in Syria. And by extension, not just the body there, but for the mental health care as well. So that is the reason some of us believe in that, and that is the reason we are here today. Dr. Yusu Matia, the acting medical superintendent of the Sierra Leone Psychiatric Hospital at Kisi, expressed his satisfaction, stating that they, however, face numerous challenges at the hospital, adding that the donation couldn't have come at a better time. Well, it's a very, very valuable one. Um, you know, at some point, we run out of food, we run out of a lot of materials, including soap and detergent for patients. But um, this came by surprise, but again, it, 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 it just made us at the point of our need. We are so happy about it. We will not forget to see the Okay, now. Our, com our constraints are multiple. To start with um, our patients are, always, uh, are, are taking drugs that increase their appetite by so, by so they, may, they may need more food than usual. So if they have to rely wholly on the food that is being supplied here, it will not be adequate for them. So we go in, we, we, we run, run out of food and so this causes patients to escape go back to their communities. That is just one of them. The other thing again is the shortage of drugs. You know, the psychotropic drugs are being supplied by partners in health, whereas uh, the, the general drugs are being supplied by the ministry. But then the psychotropic, psychotropic drugs are very expensive. They don't come in times of time. So when patients run out of drugs, they become violent. For Star TV News in Freetown, Alfred Barry reporting. And uh, those are all the stories we have for you today in a news bulletin 5. Thank you for watching. I am Leonora Jawala. Just stay with us if you can.